and welcome to The Big Game. I'm Paul Rivera, along with Macy Hill, and today we'll take a look at the last senior home game for Lions basketball. And we'll also take a look at how the baseball team wrapped up its opening weekend in the Southland Conference. But first, let's talk about basketball. The men's basketball team ended the regular season on a down note Saturday night in the University Center as arch rival Nichols State turned senior night into a loss for the Lions. Seniors honored were Anochi Ochi, Devontae Upson, and Jamichael Hawkins. But the good news is that the Lions still qualified for the Southland Conference Tournament, which starts Wednesday in Katy, Texas. The Lions' first opponent will be rival McNeese State, and Southeastern hopes to fare better than its 75-69 loss to the Colonels Saturday night. Let's go to the highlights. Senior night at Southeastern, the last regular season game before the conference tournament. Now who we have early in the first half, Devontae Upson would bang it in, take it over in the post. Devontae Upson would again score down low with the shot and the foul. Now coming up, we have Anochi Ochi feeds the beast down low and one. And Southeastern throughout this first half showing great ball movement as Jenkins knocks down a wide open three. Now here's an example of following your shot as Upson misses the congested, contested layup and gets his own rebound with the putback. The Southeastern senior starting strong as Cedric Jenkins shows touch with the floater. And Daniel Greaves gets involved with a steal and an easy lay-in before the end of the first half. Now early in the second half, an ups and blocks starts the fast break where Cedric Jenkins threads the needle to Nochi Ochi for two. Now the Colonels unfortunately would be too much for the Lions in the second half with a McBeef three and a big time slam by Javante Fry. Boom, there he is. Now Jenkins desperately trying to cut into the 12 point Colonel lead with a three late in the second. And Greaves would later provide a three of his own in the corner to cut the lead to nine. Southeastern desperately trying to come back with this last three point attempt, but they will not be able to as Nichols rebounds and wins the game 75 to 69. The Lions finished the regular season 9 and 22 and 6 and 12 in the Southland. As the 8th seed, the Lions will face off against the McNeese Cowboys in their game, first game of the conference tourney Wednesday. Big game reporter Jennifer Babcock is at the University Center live with the tournament prospects for the men's basketball team. Jen? The Southeastern men's basketball team has clinched the final spot in the Southland Conference Tournament where they will face the McNeese State Cowboys tomorrow at 5 in Katy, Texas. The last two meetings of these teams have both resulted in Cowboy wins and now that Lion point guard Zay Jackson is out due to a knee injury, the Lions have a lot of ground to make up. Back to you guys. The women's basketball team suffered a similar ending in their own senior night, falling to the Lady Colonels 77-74. Unfortunately, the Lady Lions weren't able to advance to the playoffs, finishing the season 7-22 and overall and 3-15 and in the Southland. However, one player who can hold her head high is Elizabeth Stiles, who reached a milestone in her college career, scoring 1,006 points. She became the 19th Lady Lion to reach this goal and the first one to reach 1,000 points along with 500 assists. Turning to baseball, the defending Southland Conference champion Lions won their opening weekend series in the league, taking two of three from Incarnate Word in San Antonio. Starting pitcher Jake Johnson, who is 3-0 on the mound, pitched a two-hitter to move the Lions to the record of 2-1 in the league and 12-5 overall. A week earlier, the Lions won their fourth in a row against, at home against Alcorn State. Jim Babcock has more. Southeastern Lions, currently with only one conference lost in the last eight matches, kicked off their game against Elkhorn a little slow. Absolutely nothing from either team in the first two innings, except maybe some good pitching. But things started to heat up for the Lions in the third inning when Danielle Midget hit a single up the middle, driving Jacob Williams home for Southeastern's first run. It was nothing but Southeastern until the seventh inning when Elkhorn State drove in two, making the score 5-2. to two. 
The Lions must have had an awesome seventh inning stretch because they came out and put up five runs, including a clutch single by Kenan Menard to get both Jacob Seward and Brooks Morris into home plate. The Lions would bring it home in the bottom of the eighth with three more easy runs, making the final score 13-3. One big impact player of not only today's game but the last few is senior third baseman Brett Hoffman. Brett received Southland Conference Hitter of the Week last week, hitting over 600 in a four-game stand. Brett has been a four-year starter and one of the biggest team leaders on this young Southeastern team. Uh, you know, just I try to lead by example and because uh, I know they're, they're watching, you know, and I think if I do the right things all the time, then they'll do the right things and follow in my footsteps. Coach Matt Reiser was proud of his team and excited about this win heading into conference play this weekend. And the biggest thing now is we can't overlook these two games going into conference. Uh, these are still two games to help us get uh, prepared and get ready for the weekend and get ready for conference. The Lions now 9-5 and five with a big win over Alcorn State. will head into conference play this weekend with a little pep in their step. Hopefully with leadership from the older guys such as Brett Hoffman, the Lions will find themselves in another Southland Conference Championship. For the big game, I'm Jen Babcock. The Lady Lions softball team also moved its league record to 2-1 and one by winning the opening series with Abilene Christian on the road. Sluggers Amber Sather and Sydney Booker both slammed three home runs in the series. Earlier, the Lady Lions hosted a round robin where they came up big against the University of Detroit. Nicole Fauche filed the report. The Southeastern Lady Lions softball team clinched a huge win over Detroit with a 9-1 victory this past Tuesday night. The Lady Lions took charge in the bottom of the first inning. Freshman Sydney Booker and senior Megan Moore put Southeastern on the board with the first two runs. Still in the first inning with bases loaded, sophomore Lacey Fritz hit a grand slam over the left field fence to add to their lead. Southeastern 6-0. In the bottom of the third inning with bases loaded, Fritz again came up to bat and lined a two-run single into the right center field to take a strong 9-0 lead. Junior Taylor Bishop had a dominating pitch performance. Bishop closed out nine in a row into the top of the fourth when Detroit broke the streak with one run, cutting the lead to 9-1. Our bats are a lot better this year and our pitching, like we're all just stronger in general and we're all really excited. Bishop retired the last five she faced to secure the victory for the Lady Lions. Taylor's been excellent on the mound. She had a tough loss the other night against Arkansas. And we didn't quite give her all the run support, but tonight we did. And she can keep opponents down, and if we can score, we can win. And win is what the Lady Lions accomplished. Southeastern will now head into Southland Conference play with a three-game series this weekend. Head coach Pete Lingua says as long as the team stays engaged in each individual game and remains confident, he believes his Lady Lions will be successful. For the big game, I'm Nicole Fauche. Coming up after the break, although spring is upon us, we'll look at one track athlete still working on his indoor season. And we'll see how the tennis team has started the season on fire. We'll be right back. The Southeastern Channel offers a lot more sports fans. Coaches shows, interviews with student athletes. Football games, baseball games, basketball games. Well, I enjoy watching the coaches' insight programs after the online tracks because it does give our fans an insight of what happened during the game. I enjoy watching the big game. You know, it gives me an opportunity to keep up with Southeastern athletics on a weekly basis. You know, not just football, baseball, basketball, but all even the smaller sports, you know, like soccer and volleyball. One of the things I've enjoyed most through the years watching is the production of the glory years. It's a history. It's a documentation of where we've come from around here. Solidified the reason why we brought Southeastern football back. When the, the Southeastern channel replays games, it helps the students be able to catch up and see what's going on. I like to watch the, um, the baseball games and the football games. It's the only time I get to watch Southeastern football is I get to see it on television. I don't ever have time to go. Even athletics can be an educational experience when you involve the Southeastern channel. Welcome back to the big game. The track and field athletes are prepping for their upcoming outdoor season, all except one. Alex Young is ranked 12th overall in the country and is headed to the Nationals to finish up his indoor season. Young finished second in the Southland Conference in the shot put during the indoor season. He'll be competing in Fayetteville, Arkansas, March 13th. You know, I was uh, plagued by a little bit of injury last season, so you know I, I struggled a little bit. Didn't have a bad meet, but you know I definitely wanted to be better. 
but it was a learning curve. So, you know, coming back this time around, I'm more confident and I'm ready to go compete with the big dogs, quote unquote. The tennis team opened up guns blazing in this past weekend's tournament. They proudly defended their home court twice against Lamar and LSU of Alexandria. The Lady Lions dropped the Lady Cardinals 5-2 and shut out LSU A6 Love. Southeastern is 5-1 overall and 2-0 in the Southland. The Lions golf team finished in 6th place at the 13th annual Louisiana Classic on Tuesday with a team score of 16 over par 880. The team was led by sophomore James Antis and senior Grady Brave, both of whom finished the top 20. Antis had a 2 over par 218 to finish in a tie for 12th. Brain finished a stroke behind for 17th. The two-time defending Southland Conference champion Southeastern football team continues its work in spring practice. The Lions are making a transition on the defensive side with new coordinator Blake Williams, who was hired in late February. Williams replaced Carl Scott, and the spring game is scheduled for March 28th in Strawberry Stadium. Coming up after the break, Inesa De La Cruz will join us for the pick and roll. The big game will be right back. Hello and welcome back to The Big Game. I'm Paul Rivera alongside Macy Hale and joining us on the set is our guest expert and former Lady Lions basketball player, Anessa De La Cruz. Thanks for joining us, Anessa. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about Southeastern basketball and their chances moving on, getting into the playoffs. Macy, what do you think? I think that they got lucky going into playoffs, but they definitely have some, they have a chance. They just need to get their ducks in a row. And I really think that although McNeese is on a, um, sorry, although McNeese has played them twice and beat us, I really think that maybe there's going to be a charm. Now, Anessa, you have this basketball background. You're, you've been around them a lot. Um, if they win against McNeese coming up, they're going against Northwestern State. What are your chances? How do you see this playing out? Um, well, they played McNeese very closely the last two uh, contests, so I feel like it's very hard to beat a team three times. Um, they lost to them twice, and the same with Nor Northwestern. They lost to them twice, but like I said, it's very hard to beat a team twice. The only hurdle I think they have to get over is finding someone to fill that point guard spot with Zay Jackson out with an ACL injury. Okay, let's, let's move on to Southeastern baseball. They have started off really strong in conference play. Do you guys think they're going to keep up with that? I mean, obviously they have, they have a target on their backs, being the defending Southland Conference champions. How do you guys think that's going to play into this? The confidence that they have going into the conference play is really going to be a big play. I mean, Matt Reiser in this new era of baseball, they take really big pride in that, and I really think that they are going to take this seriously and going to bring it home. Vanessa, what do you think about the baseball team? you think they're going to cave in on this pressure, or do you think they're going to continue their winning ways right now? Well, I kind of agree with what Macy said. Coach Matt Reiser and the Lions uh, men's baseball team, they know how to win. They have already won a conference championship, so I feel like they're not going to fold under pressure. When you know how to win and you figure it out and your leaders step up, I think you can only do well in conference play. Okay, well, let's move on to the Pelicans. Anthony Davis, their big man, their star is back. Now, they had a five-game winning streak without him, but the playoffs coming up in the NBA – how do you think he's going to be a factor, and how do you like their chances going forward? Well, with him back, I really like their chances moving forward. I mean, he hit a career high of 43 points against Milwaukee. That's impressive, and I think that he's only going to get better. They really need a big man going into playoffs. They don't really have a whole lot of experience at the playoffs, and I think that with him, they're just going to be over the top. Vanessa, what do you think? Um, as we all know, Anthony Davis is the Pelicans' star player, so there's no doubt that this can only help them going into playoffs. Without him, I don't think that they have a chance, but now that he's back and now that he's shown that those two weeks that he was out really gave him the time to rest up and um, gave him the time to come back strong, I think that they do have a strong chance of getting into the playoffs. Like Macy pointed out, a team that doesn't have a lot of playoff experience, but they have their star back, they can make that push. Let's move on to the Saints. A lot of shaking up has been going on. Colson had a pay cut. Ingram has a new contract. And most recently, we learned about Jimmy Graham going to the Seattle Seahawks. That's crazy, mind-blowing. 
What do you guys think about that? I mean, do you think in the long run, in the short term, how do these moves, how are these going out for the Saints? Is it going to help them, hurt them? What do you think about that? I mean, at first thought, you have to think about, like, the Seattle's going to be loaded. They're going to be stacked, and the Saints really have a lot of work to do. Um, Breeze, although Drew Breeze is strong right now, I think the Saints really need to um, start getting the, getting a backup in case something were to happen. He is getting older. I really think Bryce Petty from Baylor could be a good match for us. He's really strong, and he showed in the combine that he would be a good match with the Saints. What do you think, Anessa? I mean, especially with everything that's been going on the offensive side, they didn't have that good of a defense last year. What What do you think as far as these as far as these new moves, especially bringing Jimmy Graham? to another team in the NFC. I mean, they're going to see Jimmy Graham again. The defense is going to play him. How do you think the Saints are going to do? Well, the NFC is a very, very tough conference. And um, from the previous Super Bowl, we see that defense, the defensive side is going to win the football game. Um, teams know how to score offensively. I feel like if you have a strong quarterback, if you have strong receivers, you're going to do well. You're going to be able to score. But it's about the team who can stop the uh, the other team from scoring touchdowns. So I think these moves that they're making, uh, losing Jeremy Graham was probably not the best option, but we'll see who they're able to get to replace him. I know she, Macy, already touched on the, the QB situation. What do you think as far as moving forward about Drew Brees and all of that? Um, I think uh, Drew Brees is uh, definitely an experienced quarterback. He's getting older and um, – just going off of last year, I think the Saints really need to look at uh, shaking up the entire offensive lineup and possibly looking for a new quarterback. Um, coming out of the draft, Jameis Winston has the Heisman accolade under his belt, and I know it doesn't seem that plausible, but just like nobody expected Jimmy Graham to go to the Seahawks, we could see that happening, and uh, the Saints could shock the world. That would be crazy. Any final thoughts, Macy? I really think that the Saints could could benefit from getting a cornerback. They, With all the other changes they're making, I think – that that would only benefit them. I mean, with all these changes happening, they are really falling through the cracks. And when you have the other the uh, the contender for the um, for the Super Bowl, you really need to figure out what you're going to do. Well, it's going to be uh, really exciting, really exciting offseason turning out right now. I mean, that's it for this episode of the Big Game. Thank you all for joining us. We hope you'll join us again next time for some more Lions sports for the latest in Southeastern athletics. Please visit www.lionsports.net. For Macy Hale and Anessa De La Cruz, I'm Paul Rivera, and as always, thanks for watching.